Okay, in this video we're going to have a look at what's meant by Australia's net international investment position, which is also referred to as the term net foreign liabilities. So when you're talking about net foreign liabilities, what this graph is showing you is our net capital inflow. So the difference between the money coming into the financial account and out of the financial account in a given year. So the pink lines being above zero is a sign that in that given year that we were issuing more debt or we were borrowing more than we were lending. The blue line being above that line means that the amount of foreign asset purchases of Australian products exceeded our, our um, investments overseas. So if anything above that line means that our net foreign liabilities are increasing in that given year. And as you can see, the sort of the net of the blue and the pink is always above the line, it's more above than below the line, which means our net foreign liabilities are increasing every single year. The term net international investment position is the total net foreign liability. So basically it's our net obligation to the rest of the world. So what we owe the rest of the world, um, and then in terms of what the, and the, and what the uh, foreigners have invested in Australia, miners, what we've lent to the rest of the world, and our investments overseas. So net foreign liabilities is made up of both net foreign debt and net foreign equity. Net foreign debt are our financial obligations to the rest of the world from borrowing, minus lending. So just remember that net always means borrowing, minus lending. Net foreign equity can be quite hard to define, but it's our financial obligations that stem from foreign ownership in Australian assets, like property and shares, minus Australia's ownership in foreign assets. So foreign ownership in Australia, minus Australian ownership of foreign assets. Net foreign liabilities is basically an accumulation of all the past credits minus debits in the financial account. So every time we run a financial account surplus, that adds to our total net foreign liabilities. Every time we run a current account deficit, that adds to our total net foreign liabilities. As you can see here, in terms of our total net foreign liabilities at the moment, equity is just below zero. So we actually have what we call negative net foreign equity, which means that our investments overseas exceed investments in Australia but net foreign debt is significant. Both long-term debt and short-term debt are quite high. Most of our debt is, is long-term debt. Um, so in terms of looking at it from a flow chart perspective, okay, this relationship is critical. If we have a current account deficit, it means we're spending more than we're earning. In order to fund that current account deficit, we um, have credits in the financial account. This leads to our financial account surplus and basically means that capital inflow is exceeding capital outflow. Or basically there's more debt and equity inflows than outflows. Every time we run this financial account surplus, that leads to more net foreign liabilities. We either issue debt to fund our current account deficits, or we issue equity. Large current account deficits don't necessarily need to lead to increased net foreign debt, because we don't need to go into debt just because we have a CAD. We can sell off our assets instead. Last year we had a current account deficit. If you look at this graph, we had a current account deficit last year, but in terms of net debt flows, it's actually positive. So we actually lent more than we borrowed. Most of the way that we funded our current account was actually by selling off assets. Okay, so really important note, if Australia experiences a current account deficit, our net foreign liabilities must increase. We can either take out a loan or sell equity to fund our extra spending. Debt does not have to increase just because we have a current account deficit. Looking at Australia's total level of net foreign equity gives the government an indication of whether our CADs are sustainable. Uh, sorry, that should say the total level of net foreign liability. Gross versus net foreign debt. Gross debt is the total amount that we owe to organisations overseas. Net foreign debt is what we owe overseas, minus what we've lent overseas. So net has always got that minus figure in it. Value of what Australia has borrowed, minus what Australia has lent. So gross foreign debt will always be higher because it doesn't take away what we've lent to other countries. Net foreign debt is the largest component of net foreign liabilities and at the moment it makes up all our net foreign liabilities. It's the most common statistic used when determining our ability to meet our future our international obligations to the rest of the world. It generally expresses a percentage of our GDP and we'd like to keep our net foreign debt below 60%. We'd like to keep our current account deficit below 5% and we'd like to keep our um, net foreign debt below 60%. Net foreign equity is the obligation to stem from foreign ownership of Australian assets, property, shares, investors, minus the Australian ownership of foreign assets. And at the moment, this figure here is higher than this figure here, so net foreign equity is actually a negative figure. The two main types of debt, so when we break our net foreign debt into two different types, there's public sector debt, which is the borrowing by the federal government overseas, 
Um, they borrow to fund their budget deficits. They can borrow from the Australian sector or the private sector, or they can borrow from overseas. And at the moment, national debt is around $187 billion. Then we have private sector debt, which is the debts of large companies and banks and things like that, mainly the sort of banks and big companies in Australia um, who need to raise capital. So they use the money to grow their businesses. That debt makes up around 82% of our total net foreign debt, and it's about $858 billion at the moment. As you can see, most of our debt is private sector debt. Together, both private and public sector debt is around $1,045 billion. Really important to note, if Australia experiences a current account deficit, our net foreign liabilities must increase, not necessarily our net foreign debt, which I've explained a fair few times. We can either take out a loan or we can sell equity. Higher CAD equals higher net foreign liabilities. Higher net foreign liabilities equals a higher CAD in the future, more interest and dividend repayments. A really common question is to articulate the or analyse the relationship between a higher current account deficit and higher net foreign liabilities. The best way to do that is to go both ways. A higher CAD will lead to higher net foreign liabilities because we have to borrow or sell off assets. Higher net foreign liabilities will then lead to a higher CAD because we will have more interest repayments, dividend repayments, profit repayments flowing out of our current account. It's important to recognise that it's not just interest, it also includes the dividends and the profits that flow out as well. Reasons our debt is so high in Australia is because partly government debt is really high because of budget deficits. We have a low le level of national savings, so therefore when we borrow money um, from banks, the banks have to borrow money from overseas entities to fund our spending, and that leads to increased debt as well. Our interest rates are relatively high compared to other countries, so a lot of Australians prefer to borrow overseas, um, and that provides opportunities for foreigners to um, take advantage of that and lend money to Australians. And as we keep saying, we have large current account deficits as well, which contribute to our foreign debt. 